Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. You know when you have a smoke alarm and the battery is low, the uh, smoke alarm starts to chirp or starts to beep signaling that the battery needs to be changed? And if you have multiple smoke alarms, it's hard to figure out which is the uh, one that's uh, beeping. Well, this was going off, um, trying to figure out where it was, and I for totally forgot about this because it's a carbon monoxide and explosive gas alarm a detector that I had in the cellar. And I had this plugged into an outlet. And uh, finally located the sound. And there's another reason why these things also start to eventually beep or, and it doesn't correct itself when you change the battery. That's because they have built-in obsolescence. Uh, this one here, it's seven years. So the manufacturer's date on this, if we take a look at it, let's zoom in here, was manufactured in 2007, January 2007. And if you look at the fine print, it's actually the smallest print on here. It mentions right here where my thumb is, seven years after initial power up, this unit will chirp every 30 seconds to indicate it's time to replace the alarm. So uh, if you go to change the battery, it's not going to help. It's still going to continue to chirp or to beep, indicating that it needs to be completely replaced. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, something physically uh, or it's just that uh, they want you to replace it for safety reasons. You know, if, the longer this sits around, dirt can accumulate. But I don't know if the detectors uh, fail because of uh, the amount of time that goes by. You know, the, whatever the physical, however they uh, detect this with um, radioactive material or something. I, I'm not certain how that actually works. But uh, I was going to initially just toss this, and then I said, gee, you know, uh, I can salvage some parts off of this or cannibalize this. There's a nice uh, three-digit LCD display here. There's obviously some nice buttons. And I've had this plugged in for so long, I didn't realize or I had forgotten that there's actually a power supply or a transformer. I actually don't know if it's a... A power supply it might be but it's convenient it just snaps in here and you pull these two tabs apart and this transformer comes out well, easier said than done let's see tip it upside down so this just comes out like that and it has a nice cable here it's, it's hardwired in I've got a 9 volt battery clip here I could use. I could salvage that. And then I said, gee, you know, the, even the case itself would be nice for a project. So I'm, I'm going to cannibalize this instead of just tossing it. There's a lot of useful parts in here, I bet. And even when it makes that chirping sound, there must be a nice speaker in here. So I want to take this apart and take a look. Like anything, I thought maybe I could just take this apart, but it has, I think, some hidden screws in here, so behind these labels. Yeah, there's one right there. That actually might be the only one. I know there's something here, but it almost looks like a phone jack connection. I don't know what that is. There's nothing there, but there's, there's one screw right here. So let me take this screw out. So obviously somehow this kept track of time. I was able to keep track of seven years going by. I think this just is a trans... No, let's see. Output. Yeah, it is just a transformer. It's a 9-volt AC, 250 milliamps output. So this could still be used 
uh, in a project. Um, I don't know if there's there's some ICs here. I could see if I can identify this here. So here are the buttons. There's two buttons here. Might even keep these. Oh, here's the here's the rectifier right here. There's a bridge rectifier right here. So there's a lot of components on here that could be salvaged for other projects. I'm wondering how it kept track of time. There's an IC here. Let's see what that says. So I just did a little research on the internet and there's actually uh, two PIC microcontrollers on here by Microchip. And this one here had a label on it. So this was flashed with some information into memory. So this had a program. So there's a partial data sheet on one of the microcontrollers, 8-bit CMOS microcontroller series. And this is, it's an 18-pin chip that I have. So here's the pinout for that. You can see here two connections for an oscillator, clock in, clock out. So these are two 8-bit microcontrollers. I don't know what this is. This is C101E and I couldn't find any information on that. Could be an oscillator. I don't know. There's uh, an option for an external oscillator for these microcontrollers. Uh, here is a single single supply op amp so I could use that too I like this display it's strange it's on this like extension on this block which is uh, nice I guess and these buttons I don't know if I want to use these uh, capacitors at first I thought this was the detector but this is the you know makes sense this is the large alarm um, piezo or piezo so that I can use that and here are the two detectors uh, this is both a carbon monoxide and explosive gas alarm uh, or detector so there's one detector here it has a screen on it and at first I thought this was a capacitor but uh, further further inspection it has one of those uh, little packets that you get sometimes uh, to absorb moisture um, in a product that you might purchase uh, and let me peel this off. You can see. So I don't know which one of these is the smoke, or the, which one is the carbon monoxide, and which one is the gas detector. But this is uh, another one of the detectors. And I've got a single supply op amp here. And I don't know what this is. The C101E. I like this display. It's on sort of an extender here or a standoff, which is might be useful in some application. But this just pops out. And I can do the cut or desolder these two wires here for this transformer. Let me fire up let me fire up the soldering iron and take some of these components off. I can play around with these uh, pick microcontrollers on a later date. So let me start by taking this transformer off. Using the solder sucker. I don't think that's going to do it. Let's see. Probably just easier to cut it out. Thank you. 
There's that. Makes it a little less clumsy to work around. It's a nice battery clip. Take that off. Just pull the wires through. I like this extender here. So I got that off and this just plugs into this extender here. Got these nice long leads. So that's nice. With this extender, I can put that to use. So this piezo actually has three leads on it. I wonder if it's two in one. Two different tones in one maybe. Let's see how easy this comes off. And it has these plastic clips you just press. Let's see. Oh, press in. Let's see how easy this is to come off. There it is. So I could use that. Experiment with this. And that's where that used to be. I did look up this part here and was not able to find any information on it. This is uh, by ST Microelectronics. It's an EZ48617. So there's a little module here for one of these detectors again I don't know if that's the gas or the carbon monoxide detector let me concentrate on the on these ICs here see how easy I can get them out That was easier than I thought it was going to be. So I just used a little solder work to clean it up and move the pins in the hole while I was heating them. And uh, there's one of the first picks I can experiment with if it still works after heating it. So let me try this one. This is the one that had was flashed with some program. So I'll desolder this one. So I'm using the solder sucker and solder wick to clean it up. And here's the second pick. So 
So hopefully those are still good. Two microcontrollers. Let me take this op amp out. And there's the op amp. So that's about all the components I'm going to take off of this. You get the idea. Uh, some useful components here. I think the best I like is this uh, three-digit LED display here with the extra long pins and then this extender. That's pretty neat. Actually, it's just uh, it's not an extender. It's just a support for the extra long leads. So that's pretty good. Yep. Uh, of course, these PIC microcontrollers got two chips here. Hopefully they still work after desoldering them. A nice 9 volt battery connection here. And an op amp, and I don't know what this other IC is. And it's hard to use this module if you don't have a data sheet on it and you don't know uh, how this is, how the circuit is designed on this. <clears throat> Just for the heck of it, it took out a couple of the diodes. You can use them for experiments. Transistors, again, they have short leads on them too. Uh, so I don't know if I can put them to use. And these switches here with these buttons that extend also. The momentary switch. You can use those. Solder some extra leads on those. And there's a capacitor, electrolytic. Oh, and not to forget this piezo. That's nice. And of course, this housing can be put to use for a project. I like the housing. Oh, and I forgot the transformer. So I can use that too, probably, on a nice project. Definitely this housing can be put to use. You get the idea. So instead of just tossing this out in the trash, I've got some useful components I can use for some experiments. So if you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and or comment, and thanks for watching.